parents and pet lim for allowing me to be part of the Don't French go. Revolution. No, isa pong malaking karangalan to be here tonight. Excited, makas- excited ako makasama kayo. And it's a privilege to have been lined up with Sir Francis Kong, si Ching Kita, no? mga idol ko po yung mga yan. And first time ito mangyayari ever. Kaya this is a blessing for you and it's a privilege for us to be part of this. No? Uh, kung nasusubaybayan nyo tayo sa Facebook channel natin, no? two weeks ago, we started talking about infidelity. No? Yun yung topic natin the last two weeks. And I said, hindi enough yung time natin, this mga short clips natin to address all the issues on infidelity. So we will talk about those things in detail. Now, ano nga ba infidelity? No? Infidelity is the act of un- being unfaithful no? sa spouse mo sa partner mo. It could be a sexual or a romantic relationship with another person other than the one you are with right now. And in that process, in that act, you break a promise or you break a commitment. No, yan po yung infidelity. No? Bakit natin kailangan pag-usapan itong infidelity? One expert asked, no, sabi niya, what is the percentage na mag-cheat ang isang tao sa marriage niya or relationship niya? And the overwhelming answer is between 20 to 75%. Yung isang relationship study suggests that around 70% sa atin, tayong lahat, no exception, have cheated on our partners at one time. And only 5%, yung naniniwala na mag-cheat, mag-cheat yung partner nila o nag-cheat yung partner nila. So bakit ang laki ng difference, no? Kasi cheating means different uh, dif- means different things for, other, for many people, no? For some, this might be cheating. For others, it's not, no? Kailangan natin itong pag-usapan kasi this is something that is so prevalent, no? Eh, this, is some, this is something that happens in real life. Karaniwan hindi ito lantara, no? This, these things are done in secret, no? We don't talk about it. Yung nangangaliwa, hindi naman niya ipangalandakan na meron siyang affair, no? And the person who is affected, no? Hindi rin naman niya basta ipagbibida na yung asawa niya o yung partner niya is in, a, in an illicit relationship. Yung iba naman, simply hindi sila aware that they are already cheating in their relationship. Kaya tonight, we will try to shed light on this sensitive issue. Dahil hindi ito pinag-uusapan, hindi ito lubusang naiintindihan, at hindi rin natin ito ina-address. Kaya pag hindi natin ito inintindi, pinag-uusapan, ina-address, no, maaari itong maging dahilan ng pag-ihiwalay at pagkasira ng maraming relationships. Tayong mga OFW migrants, familiar tayo sa mga stories of infidelity. Meron tayong kaibigan, meron tayong kakilala, alam natin that this really happens in real life. Especially between couples in long-distance relationships. No? If we don't understand what infidelity is, what constitutes infidelity, and for all you know, it could be happening already under our noses without us even knowing it. And before we know it, it's too late. Dahil what we normally see is just the after effect of infidelity. Most of the time, pag nakita natin to, too late na. Last week, yung letter sender natin, sabi niya, Joe, nakakalungkot, no? Kasi marami sa mga OFWs natin, it's either nakakabuntis yung lalaki o yung babae nabubuntis. And it's something that's happening everywhere in the world where there are OFWs. Now, if you think you are completely faithful to your partner, think again. Dahil infidelity, I just want to let you know this. No? Infidelity is not only limited to physical contact. Pwede kang maging close sa isang tao who isn't your partner. At alam mo wala kayong affair dahil wala namang physical na nangyayari, magkaibigan lang kayo. Pero sometimes, you know, you get to that feeling na parang na, ang feeling mo, you've crossed over the boundary. Confused ka dahil uh, you're starting to spend more time thinking about that person while you are still very much in a committed relationship. I'd like to share with you, you know, a story that I read some years ago sa Love Notes. No? Tawagin na lang natin siyang Marge. Mga nasa mid 40 siya, meron siyang asawa who is a very good provider, a very good dad, mahal na mahal niya at mahal na mahal siya, and there's really nothing wrong with their marriage. No? Yung best friend ng asawa niya visits every now and then. No? Uh, 
there's really nothing special no nagluluto siya pag andon prepares uh, dinner or lunch will push us sandali to chat and then she goes on doing her chores tawagin na lang natin siyang best friend now things change when she started to feel differently towards kay best friend no napapansin niya na kapag pupunta si best friend She makes herself presentable. Imbis na nakadaster lang siya, magsusuot siya ng dress na alam niyang she looks good on it. Mag-aayos siya ng konting na mukha, may konting foundation. No? Maglalagay siya ng pabango, konting pabango, ayusin niya yung sarili niya. No? For some reason, parang excited siya pag dumarating si best friend. In fact, napansin nga ng mga anak niya, si mami excited pag dumarating si Tito. No exchange of words, no stolen glances, apart dun sa usual beso, no no physical contact. Pero, alam mo yun, things started to get worse when her husband left for abroad. A typical OFW story. So, hindi na pumupunta si best friend dahil wala na yung husband. No? And she started to miss him. Sabi niya, Joe, I can't explain, pero lagi ko siyang naiisip, no? Every time nag-uusap kami ng asawa ko, pagkatapos naiisip ko siya. And then natitempt ako na kumusahin siya, i-message siya, no? Then this opportunity came, birthday ng anak nilang babae. Nagdadalong isip siya kung sasabihin niya sa asawa niya na iimbitahin niya yung best friend or hindi. Pero sinabi na rin niya, wala namang masama, wala namang mali siya. Okay lang sa asawa niya dahil best friend naman niya yun. No? Everything was just casual, Always no, no special conversation, may konting pasulyap-sulyap, may konting pangiti-ngiti, no? And then after that event, ng birthday ng anak niya, sabi niya, we started messaging each other. Simple yung kamusta na lang naman, sabi niya. Pero dumating yung time na she felt like she has crossed the boundary. Dahil yung mga messages nila, no? She started exchanging messages secretly. Sabi niya, hindi ko sinasabi sa asawa ko. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. Wala namang kaming pinag-uusapang kakaiba. Kamustahan lang. So feeling ko, wala namang masama sa ginagawa ko. But just the same, ah, hindi ko sinasabi sa asawa ko. Tapos sabi niya, Joe, I began to think of him more often than I think of my husband. Yung usapan nila evolved into more caring conversations. Yung, kumusta ka na? Kumain ka na ba? Kumusta mga bata? How was your day? O, ingat ka, no? Uh, take care, huwag ka maaga. Tawagan mo ako pagdating mo or message mo ako pag nakarating ka na sa bahay. Tapos, nag-umpisang mas marami siyang kwento sa kay best friend kaysa sa kwento sa asawa pag tumatawag, no? Pag nag-facetime sila. Sabi niya, Joe, minsan mas excited ako pag alam ko mag-uusap kami ni best friend more than kapag alam ko kung tatawag yung asawa ko, no? And then, sabi niya, I started to share more things with him than my husband. And alam naman natin ng buhay OFW, you know, dahil maraming, dahil sa long distance relationship, maraming tension. May tension sa pamilya, may tension sa mga anak, may tension sa pera, may tension sa relationship ng mag-asawa, no? And sabi niya, Joe, si best friend yung una kong sinasabihan na nung, nung mga details, no? Pag nag-aaway kami mag-asawa. And dumating sa point that I started comparing my best friend sa asawa ko. Marami ako nakitang ugali niya na hindi ko nakikita sa asawa ko. And then, sabi niya, Joe, just last night, napaniginipan ko siya na kaming dalawa daw. And gumising siya with a smile on her face. Pero natakot siya. Bakit? Bakit ko siya napaniginipan? Ano, ano ba itong nararamdaman ko? So, That morning, she started deleting all the conversations, yung mga text messages nila, kahit yung mga messages na paulit-ulit niyang binabasa kasi parang kinikilig siya, no? Binura niya yun kasi parang natakot siya. And one time, nadula siya sa asawa niya na sabi niya nag-uusap kami ni best friend, no? And naramdaman niya parang, parang nagselos siya ata yung asawa niya, no? Siyempre, naging defensive siya, no? Nagsinungaling siya, sabi niya, misa lang naman kami mag-usap, hindi naman kami laging uh, nagme-message. No? Nag-aalit pa ako sa kanya, sabi niya, kasi bakit ka ba nag-iisip ng ganyan? And she ended her letter like this, sabi niya, Joe, I don't know kung bakit ganito yung nararamdaman ko. Am I being unfaithful to my husband kahit 
wala namang kaming ginagawang masama ni best friend. Tulungan mo ako mag-isip ng tuwid. Am I committing infidelity? Gusto ko ibalik yung tanong sa inyo. Based on this story na sinayar ko sa inyo. This is a real story that I read some years ago. Ano sa tingin nyo? Uh, si Marge ba? Let's call her Marge, no? Uh, kung Marge ang pangalan mo, I hope this is not you. But sa tingin nyo ba, Marge committed infidelity? You see, infidelity, bago natin sagutin yan, takes many forms. It can also be subjective. Kasi what, what uh, like a couple might consider cheating, sa isang couple, it's not cheating, no? But any form of infidelity can fall under two main categories. Physical infidelity and emotional infidelity. And an affair can be a combination of both physical and emotional involvement. Now, let's talk about physical infidelity. All sexual affairs fall under this category. Having sexual relationship with another person other than your partner, no, that's physical infidelity. Regardless of how intimate or less intimate that relation is, if there is a sexual physical component to the relationship, it falls under this category. And it could be either purely physical, ito yung mga one night stand or nag-hire ka ng sexual services or it could be physical and emotional. This is where long-term affairs fall under. Kasi merong romantic component. Hindi lang physical, may, merong emotional involvement in the relationship. But we will not focus on this. Kasi pag pinag, pinag, uh, pinag-usapan natin infidelity, ang naisip lagi natin, ganitong klaseng infidelity. But do you know that there is another form of infidelity that lurks uh, silently under relationships, under the radar, na minsan pag hindi natin ito na-address, it becomes and leads to physical infidelity. And this is what we call emotional infidelity. Maaring narinig nyo na ito, you've read about this, but this is really happening. And this is where it becomes a bit of a gray area. No? Dahil it's easy to blur the line between platonic friendship and an illegitimate affair. Now, under emotional infidelity, number one, merong emotional affair. Ano ba emotional affair? This is where you get emotionally attached to someone other than your partner. Mahirap ito ma-recognize, no? Dahil it doesn't happen immediately. Medyo gradual to, no? This is a product of constant communication. So, umpisa, walang mali siya dahil kaibigan lang. Nalulungkot ka. You uh, start to have a circle of friends, no? Same sex and opposite sex. No? But the danger is this friendship has a tendency to evolve. And ano yung telltale sign na yung friendship mo is evolving into an emotional affair? Number one, you lose your interest in your present relationship. And then this new friendship no, takes your attention away from your partner. Number two, under emotional infidelity. Ito yung mas dangerous. It's called cyber affairs. No una, remember, no unang panahon, panahon natin, no? it takes a lot of effort and energy to get more intimate with someone. No? You have to make a physical long distance call or, you know, landline call to be there physically to uh, in front of a person. No? Or it takes a lot of effort to access pornographic material or any other material that may be detrimental to your relationship. Ang danger ng cyber affair, it's so easy to engage in this. Hawak, hawak nyo ngayon, the tool that people use to engage in it, your cell phone, your, your computer, your, your tablet. You know? uh, it's easy to engage dahil this kind of affair happens entirely online. You know? Texting, messaging, sexting, flirting, video calling. Pag nagkaroon ito ng romantic flavor, or nagkaroon ng sexual content without your spouse, that's considered a cyber affair. Remember, emotional cheating is harmful to any relationship because it erodes the basic and core foundation of your marriage or of your relationship. It erodes integrity. Yung integridad mo. It erodes trust. Yung trust ninyo sa isa't isa yung trust ng partner mo sa'yo. 
it erodes the level of transparency dahil you start to keep uh, secrets you start to keep uh, things to yourself tinatago mo na you're starting to hide things it uh, erodes honesty in your relationship and most of all it erodes the commitment that you have for one another if you're married remember the day when you said i will love you forever till death do us part kahit anong mangyari it's you and me through thick and thin no it erodes integrity trust transparency honesty and commitment now bumalik tayo sa story ni march how can you tell if you are having an emotional affair with someone else remember most of the emotional affairs start with platonic friendships yung friendship na wala mali siya masaya ka lang kasi kaibigan mo siya hindi ko sinasabing masama magkaroon ng kaibigan outside your marriage or your relationship it's completely normal it could also be healthy sometimes diba but the danger is sometimes hindi mo alam na nagko-cross ka na uh, on the line between friendship and an emotional affair You started as friends, but these things, yung mga emotion, yung mga konting pasweet, yung mga konting romantic undertones, over time, nadidevelop. Now, how do you know that your friendship is starting to have a romantic flavor? Number one, kapag nagiging secretive ka na. Normally, pag, uy, nakita kami na, no, magkasama nga kami, kumain nga kami sa labas kagabi after work. You can easily share that with your partner. Pero the moment na hindi mo na kinukwento dahil medyo nag-aalangan ka na, that could be a sign that it's veering towards the romantic side. Pangalawa, meron ka ng emotional tension. Kasi parang nag-uumpisa ng mahati yung damdamin mo. For this friend na lagi mong kasama dahil malayo ka sa pamilya mo, sa asawa mo, and your husband or your partner, nagkakaroon ka ng emotional tension. Telltale signs. Now, I'll, I will tell you, 10 uh, indicators, possible indicators that you might be having an emotional affair or you might be committing emotional infidelity. I say this is a gray area. I say this is a dangerous area dahil kumuha kayo ng papel, checkan nyo yung mga sasabihin ko ang 10 indicators of sexual infidelity, and you would definitely, lahat tayo would be able to check a few of them, no? It doesn't mean that you're having an emotional affair, but these are indicators, no? And it's good to know this, para alam mo na once you realize na, ay, I think I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, teka, hold back ka muna, baka this is getting way beyond my control, no? Number one, tawag nila dito selected sharing. Hindi mo na kinukwento sa asawa mo lahat ng pinag-uusapan nyo. Fini-filter mo na, no? Ang ikukwento mo lang yung mga neutral, yung mga bagay na hindi mag-uumpisa ng pagdududa o pagsiselos, no? Or meron pa yung pinag-usapan na something personal, something, maybe you exchanged uh, sweet messages o uh, ingat ka, may ka na ba? Hindi mo kinakwento yon, So you start to select the things that you share with your spouse. Yan ang number one. Number two, you start to confide intimate details about your relationship troubles. Iba yung pag kinakwento mo sa best friend mo, ay nag-away kami ng ano, yung asawa ko, eh. nag-away kami ni ganyan kasi ang nakakainis naman kasi ganito. Okay lang yun eh. But when you start to confide intimate details about yung mga away nyo sa isa't isa o yung troubles nyo bilang mag-asawa, that could be a telltale sign that you are getting into an emotional affair or nagiging, you're committing emotional infidelity. Number three, you get emotionally detached from your partner. Ito yung parang nalalamig ka na. Hindi ibig sabihin nun, hindi mo na siya mahal. No? Pero parang nawala yung spark. Parang yung, hindi ka na ganun ka-excited. Simply because there's another person na hati na attention mo. No? So you, you start to get this emotional detachment from your partner. Number four, ito, you start to think of that person most of the time. In your waking moment, bago ka matulog, pag napatigil ka, mapapatulala ka, may isip mo itong taang to. More than your spouse or more than your partner. That's a very 
telltale sign na you might be getting emotionally attracted or emotionally involved with your best friend or yung co-worker mo o yung kasabay mo sa bus pag pupunta ka sa trabaho. Number four. Number five, you become less intimate with your partner. Kung magkasama kayo, hindi ka na ganun ka touchy sa kanya. Hindi, hindi ka na excited pag nahiyakap ka niya o hinahalikan ka niya. No? Kung magkalayo kayo, wala na yung sweetness. Wala na yung... Alam mo yung pag-intimate ka with your spouse or with your partner kahit nag-uusap kayo sa telepono long distance or FaceTime kayo. Andun yung, andun yung, yung excitement mo. No? Nawawala na yun. Nagiging less na parang okay lang kung wala. Kung andyan, sige. No? That's a sign that you might be into an emotional affair with someone. Number six, you lie to your partner about your relationship with the other person. Ay, kaibigan ko lang yun. Hindi, ano kasi, nag, nag, lumabas lang kami, nagkataon lang, nagkasabay kami, and then we ate lunch together. You start to create stories and tell lies about your real relationship with that person. The moment na nagsinungaling ka, the moment na tinuwis mo yung story mo about that person, it could be a sign that you are into an emotional affair. Number seven, ito yung uh, mahirap, no? You start to compare your spouse or your partner with the other person. Buti pa to, pinapakinggan ako. Buti pa to, sweet sa akin. Buti pa to, tinatanong kung kumusta yung araw ko. Buti pa to, laging interested pa nagsasalita ako. You start comparing yung pagkakaiba ng asawa mo sa taong to. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but that could be a sign of emotional infidelity. Number eight, ito, ginagawa ito ng marami. Uh, you hide or you delete messages on your phone or your computer. Sino sa inyo yung gumagawa niyan? I tell you, pag ginawa niyo yan, you are guilty of something. No? Kahit sabihin mo pang, hindi, hindi, wala, wala, ano lang yun. Parang kaibigan lang. Eh, nag, nagkataon lang na nags nag siya tapos sinabi, kamusta na ako? Dinilit ko na lang para sigurado. The moment, no, tandaan nyo, recall, uh, two months, three months ago, did you delete the message from someone? No. Unless nakaaway nyo yun or ayaw nyo talaga sa taong yun, that's a different story. But when you start deleting messages on your phone or your computer with that person, that could be a sign of emotional infidelity. And number 10, you become defensive. Kapag kinu-question ng partner mo, ng asawa mo, yung relationship mo with this person, o bakit ba kayo laging lumalabas? O hindi, ah, ano lang naman eh, di ba? O bakit, bakit kayo kumain sa labas kagabi? O bakit kayo nakita? Alam mo, when, when your spouse or your partner starts to ask about that person, ano ka kagad? Pangil ka kagad? Defensive ka kagad? Galit ka kagad? Babalik ka rin mo? Bakit ka ba ganyan? Nagsiselos ka ba? No. So, 10 signs that you might be actually into an emotional affair. Kaya sinabi ko, dangerous ito. It's lurking underneath. Akala mo, okay lang yan kasi malungkot syempre pag nasa abroad ka, kailangan mo ng kaibigan, kailangan mo ng kausap. But little do you know that it could evolve into something deeper that you might regret in the end. Now, ang ganda, no? Pag naisip mo, o nga, no? Parang nangyayari nga yun. And none of us is exempted from that. No? Especially when it comes to cyber affairs. Ang dali kasi ng cyber affair, mag, mag, mag-search ka lang sa Facebook or sa Instagram, i-like mo lang isang tao or mag-message request ka lang, friend request ka lang. Pag sumagot, pwede na kayo mag-exchange ng conversations and then you can become sweet to each other, magkita kayo, mag-meet up kayo. It's easy to do that with technology. So, what do you do about emotional cheating? Kapag Ito, I, I just want to let you know that when you feel that you are in that situation, there's something that you can do. Number one, be honest with yourself. Mahirap man tanggapin, pero not all relationships are perfect. Not all marriages are perfect. And minsan, ikaw bilang tao, nag, napupuno ka na rin sa asawa mo o sa partner mo. Naiinis ka na rin dahil paulit-ulit na lang. Ito na lang lagi pinag-aawayan natin. Be honest with yourself. And acknowledge that you are in a situation, you are in a relationship na alam mong mali. No? It's important, unang-una, that you have uh, a sense of acknowledgement and admittance. 
that there is something wrong. Kasi kung wala kang, kung hindi mo iniisip na mali siya, then there's nothing to start with. So number one, be honest with yourself. Number two, importante to. If you really are serious about your current relationship, then you have to end the emotional affair. An affair cannot flourish if one person is not participating. It could either be siya or ikaw, but if you find yourself in an emotional affair, put an end to it. Ikaw ang pwede gumawa niyan. Kahit yung isang tao ayaw mag-let go, if you let go, then you can distance yourself from that person. Admit that you are doing something that is not right, and then commit to end that relationship. And number three, go back. Bakit nga ba nangyari ito? Bakit ko nga ba ito ginawa? Number three, reflect on what is missing in your relationship. It's true that the reason why you started to fall for this person kasi merong kulang sa relationship mo na pinupunuan ng taong ito. Now, does that mean na valid yung relationship mo sa kanya dahil pinunuan niya yung pagkukulang asawa mo? Obviously, hindi. Of course, it's not valid. Dahil may asawa ka eh. But your asawa is not perfect. What can you do about it? No? Reflect on what's missing in your relationship. Ano nga ba? Siguro, namimiss ko lang yung pagiging uh, sweet na itong tao to kasi yung asawa ko, hindi na naman ako masyadong pinapansin or kung ano-ano na lang ang uh, topic na pinag-uusapan namin, hindi man lang niya tinatanong kung kumusta na ako. No? Number four, once you have identified the things that you think na need mo na hindi na pupunuan ng partner mo, discuss that with your partner. No? Kung sasabihin mo man o hindi na meron kang emotional affair, let your, I don't know, that's your call. But let your partner know na I think we need to fix something in our relationship. Kasi lately na feel ko parang ang dry na natin sa isa't isa. Talk about it. No? Uh, discuss the, the needs and discuss the reasons with your partner. And be very clear and specific with what you need in the relationship. No? Mahirap, mahirap manghula. No? Uh, minsan, ang feeling natin dapat alam na nila. Pero ang totoo, hindi nila alam. So, mahirap manghula. The best way to find out is to actually for that person to tell us ano ba yung gusto mong gawin ko to make you feel more loud so be clear and be specific with what you need in the relationship whether it's an emotional need a physical need or an intellectual need and number five recommit yourself to the relationship no? spend more time together kumakalayo kayo you know instead of talking to this person and messaging this person, i-block mo na siya. No? Message mo na lang yung asawa mo, yung partner mo, kumustahin mo siya. Kung gaano ka ka-sweet sa taong to try to be that sweet to your husband, kahit hindi siya ganun ka-sweet sa'yo. Check on each other regularly. No? As often as possible. Communication is very important. Emotionally support one another. Marami kayong issues, maraming challenges sa marriage nyo, sa relationship nyo. Be there for one another. Support each other emotionally. Five things that you can do when you are uh, in an emotional affair. And number five, no, work with a professional. Kung sa tingin nyo, kailangan nyo ng help outside your marriage. No? Misan, there are things that you cannot fix by yourself. Yourself, You, you need someone, na, someone you can trust, maybe a counselor or a pastor or uh, a lolo or a lola or an uncle or a tita na pinagkakatiwalaan yung work with someone who can help you process no if if there's a professional that you feel comfortable with no get some professional help kung kinakailangan that's important and number six para sa akin yung pinaka importante sa lahat no commit yourself and your relationship to the Lord in prayer sabi sa Bible James 1.14 but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. The temptation to commit infidelity, the temptation to get into an emotional affair, it starts with a desire. Ang sabi sa Bible, it starts with our own desire. Hindi desire ng ibang tao. Not on our spouse, not our, on our affair. It starts with our desire. And it starts when we are, sabi, lured or enticed by our desire. Remember, no affair 
can happen without your consent. Kaya ka anjan, to where you are right now, because you chose and you have agreed to be there. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, pinilit ka sa ako ng taong to eh. Kasi kung ayaw mo, hindi ka pwede pilitin. Kaya ka anjan, because you chose to be there. And I want you to remember this. Cheating is not a mistake. Because when you know that you are in a path of infidelity, you will always have a choice. Nung moment na pumasok ka sa kwartong yan, nakatayo ka sa labas ng pinto, you know you have a choice. You have a choice to give in to your own desire or a choice to be loyal to the commitment you made to the person that you promised to love forever. Cheating is not a mistake. Cheating is always a choice. At hindi mo yan pwede isisi sa circumstance, hindi mo yan pwede isisi sa ibang tao, sa atsawa mo, because that is your choice. Remember, sabi sa Bible, when it, temptation happens, when you are enticed and lured by your own desires. So, yun lang, yun lang gusto ko i-share sa inyo. No? Gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo na, It's important first to understand that these things happen. And don't be too hard on yourself. Kasi hindi lahat ng tao will have the strength to uh, turn away sa mga tukso. Lalo na kapag, di ba sabi natin the last time, uh, when you are hurting, when you are angry, when you are tired, and when you are lonely, lonely and tired. No? Yun yung mga times na mabilis kayo matem o mas madali kayong attempt to get into an emotional affair. And when you spell it, H-A-L-T, it means hope. Kaya, the first thing to do is to realize that you're doing something that's not going to be good for you, and then stop and halt. Ayan. So, yan ang ating, uh, yan ang gusto ko i-share sa inyo ngayong gabing ito. No? Uh, I wish we have more time, but we would like to dedicate a few more minutes to answer questions sa mga OF Winners natin na nanonood o nakikinig ngayon. No? I'm sure uh, this has struck some chord in your heart dahil lahat tayo, we have experienced this at one point or another. Sabi nga ng study, 70% of us have cheated at some time, maybe before or maybe now, hindi natin alam. But the thing is, there's something that you can do about it. And it's important to remember that marriage is a choice. Love is a commitment and it's something that you have to fight for. The person that you are with now, your your husband, your wife, that's someone that you have to fight for. You don't fight in your marriage, you fight for your marriage, especially when there are temptation around you, you when know? there are opportunities for you to stray and find yourself in the arms of somebody else. Yan. Maraming maraming salamat po for joining me. And uh, Jen, I'll turn it over to you para sa mga questions natin from our uh, OF winners. Grabe. Napakagandang topic talaga. Bagay na bagay po talaga ito para sa mga OFW. Marami pong nakarelate uh, Sir Joe. Pero yes. dahil dyan, dahil dyan, tayo po ay mag-accept po tayo ng tatlong question. Okay lang po ba? May tatlong gusto okay. mag-accept. Okay. Phone-in questions. Oh. Parang phone-in questions. Oh. Pero ano, zoom-in question. Yan. Sige, okay. game. Yes. Question. Yan. Yeah. Tawagin na po natin ang isa sa ating uh, business center owner, Miss Mary Jane Senson. Pakipin na lang po. Para... Hi, Jane. Jane. Ay, Hello. Jane. Hi, Jane. Hello, kamusta po? Kamusta po sa lahat? Yan, welcome po. Dito kami po sa Singapore. Kasama po ang ating team. Oh, well. Ang mga taga Singapore, magandang magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Ayan. Naririnig na po ba ako? <laughs> yes, naririnig na kita, Jane. Loud and clear. Okay. Ito po yung katanungan po namin, actually po, ano. Um, yes. Okay, what steps can be taken to prevent the perpetuations of infidelity in future generations of the family? Oo nga, no? Well, unang-una, infidelity, no? Uh, it's important to uh, protect the future generation from from committing that. No? But it starts with us. No? 
again, ang sabi ko nga, it's important, no? Unang-una, to know the meaning of commitment. When you get yourself into a relationship, you commit yourself to that relationship, no? And it all starts when we become selfish, when we start to think only of our own needs. Sabi nga sa Bible, no? Put the needs of others above your own. Kasi when you start thinking about yourself, it's always, paano ako magiging masaya? Uh, paano ko, alam mo yun, dati, ganito yun, dati, people get into affairs because they're not happy. Now, people get into affairs because they can be happier. It doesn't mean na hindi sila masaya sa marriage nila, but I can be happier with someone else. What does that mean? It means that you are more concerned with your own personal feelings than the feelings of your children, the feelings of your spouse, no? So when we talk about how to prevent the future generation from uh, falling into the same thing, it's important to start with ourselves, no? Importante yung commitment, no? When you make you when you love someone, remember, love is always a choice, no? And that choice is exercised when you are faced with temptations. The 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 opportunity to love a person that opportunity is always put to the test kapag uh, a third party gets introduced into the relationship sabi ko nga one of the greatest challenges in any relationship or marriage is when God allows a third party to come in kasi dun matetest kung gaano ka committed dun sa promise mo sa tao na mamahalin mo siya forever so it's important unang una to remember that you always have a choice. When you are faced with something that will tempt you to uh, commit ad- adultery or infidelity, you can stop and stand and say, I have a choice. I have a choice to continue or I have a choice to stop this. And it starts with understanding that you are committed to the person that you love. And that commitment is always a choice. And as, as, as always, sabi nga natin, you always pray. Kasi minsan on our own, di natin kaya. Kasi kung kaya natin, we wouldn't find ourselves in that situation. And the reason why we're there is because naging mahina tayo, naging marupok tayo. But God will always find a way to uh, bring us back kapag nagsisi tayo with all sincerity. Yan. Thank you for your question, Jane. Thank you. Yan. Thank you so much, Miss Jane. Yes. Thank you so much. Sino pa, Jen? Ito pa, sir, si Miss Marlene Hemuta from Dubai. Marlene from Dubai. Hi, Marlene. Ayun, magandang buhay po sa lahat. Magandang buhay sa'yo, Sir Jordi Mango. Napakaganda. Yes, sa'yo din, Marlene. Sobrang relief ang lahat ng mga OFW. Pero sir, ito yung question ko. Question po as OFW. Ano yes. po ang pinakamagandang advice sa mga kababayang OFW na umalis papuntang ibang bansa para hindi na nila basta-basta iiwan ang kanilang mga mahal sa buhay at pamilya sa Pilipinas dahil sa isang panandali ang pagkakamali lamang yun, ay nag Alam mo yung tanong na yan, napakagandang tanong, no? And pag-iisipin mo, simple lang naman yung sagot, di ba, no? But kapag andun ka sa sitwasyon na yun, the reason na maraming nangyayari pa rin to in spite of of yung conviction natin na alam naman natin na in the first place kung ano yung dahilan, bakit tayo namalis para mag, magkaroon ng magandang buhay ng pamilya natin. But somewhere along the way, biglang nauwi na hindi na tayo uuwi kasi meron na tayong ibang pamilya, no? I think, uh, gaya na sabi ko the last time, it's important to know yourself. Know your values, no? Una-una, alam mo naman sa sarili mo na hindi ka ganyang tao. Maaring nadala ka lang sa tukso, nadala ka lang ng kalungkutan, nadala ka lang ng uh, masamang uh, company o nabab- napabarkada ka lang sa mga tao. Baluktot ang paninindigan at paniniwala sa buhay. But you know yourself, panindigan mo yung paniniwala mo sa sarili mo. Umalis ka ng mahal mo ang asawa mo, mag- bumalik ka ng mahal ang asawa mo. Umalis ka ng mahal ang pamilya mo, ipaglaban mo yung pagmamahal na yun kahit nahihirapan ka, kahit nalulungkot ka, kahit maraming mga tukso na lumalapit sa iyo, ipaglaban mo yung dahilan. No? Always look back. Bakit ka ba umalis in, sa Pilipinas in the first place? 
Kasi mahal mo yung pamilya mo. Gusto mo silang bigyan ng magandang kinabukasan. Tanong mo yung sarili mo, ito bang gagawin kong ito? Uh, magkakaroon ko ba ng magandang kinabukasan ang pamilya ko sa gagawin kong ito? Kung hindi, pag-isip kang mabuti. Kasi pag uh, in-embrace mo pa rin yung bagay na yun, ibig sabihin selfish ka. Mas mahal mo yung sarili mo, mas concerned ka sa sarili mong kaligayahan kasi kaligayahan ng pamilya mo. So know yourself, fight for your family, know your values, and again, as I always say, you always pray for God to help you labanan yung mga puksong ito pag dumarating sa buhay mo. Okay na po. Thank you so much kay Miss Marlene Ayputa. Thank you ulit, Sir Joe. At Thank syempre, you. Thank you, Marlene, sa, sa mga taga-Dubai. Ano ang oras ba dyan? Umaga ba hapon sa Dubai? It's 5 p.m. po sa Dubai. 5 p.m. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Yes po. And then yung third natin na magtatanong, si Miss Eloisa Sedano. From UK naman po, sir. Hi, si yes. Eloisa. Are you here? Ay, ayan. Pag-asa na si Eloisa. Hello po! Um, Hi! Good evening! Hi Eloisa! Good evening po Sir Joe. It's yes, saan ka sa UK Eloisa? Sa Leeds po. Sa Leeds, United Leeds. Kingdom. Opo. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm really excited especially seeing you here online. Kasi dati sa radio lang na kayong nakikita Sir. Grabe! Yes! <laughs> so, um... Nagulat po ako kasi ako pala magtatanong. <laughs> kasi napaka-sensitive po yung ating mga paksa ngayon. De, ano, kasi yes. it's happening all over. Kahit mm. siya Pilipino, it's lahat po ng tao. Tama po ba? Yes. Agree po ba kayo wala, dyan? Walang pinipiling kultura, walang pinipiling bansa. And, Hindi lang OFW, po, lahat, everywhere. Yeah, kahit ano pong nationality. So, yes. But it's just so sad that um, bilang OFW, it seems to be very common na po na nangyayari. Yes. So, ngayon, na, 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 I was really interested sa topic nyo po, sir. Um, like, of course, na infidelity is not just about physical things, no? So, mm. marami po uh, uh, bagay-bagay dyan. And mm. um, yung, may, yung general question ko po is how to win po as a couple and how to avoid this um, infidelity lalo lalong la pag malayo kasi meron po akong nababasa like one um, example to win uh, as a couple is you mm. cover each other's weaknesses and yes. you also celebrate each other's strength yes. so ano po, po ba yung pwede natin gawin to win as a couple. Thank you, Paul. Oh, alam mo, yes, magandang sinabi mo na you cover each other's weaknesses and celebrate each, uh, each other's strengths, no? Kasi, uh, ang mag-asawa, I believe, they're created to complement each other, no? Meron kang, meron kang pangailangan na napupuno ng asawa mo at may pangailangan asawa mo na napupunuan mo, no? And when you are separated, no, itong pagkukulang na ito, uh, becomes limited dahil because of your distance, no? Especially mga physical na pangailangan natin, no? And this is the most challenging part kasi we start to look for it sa ibang paraan. Kung sino yung close sa atin, doon natin inahanglap para punuan yung pagkukulang na yun, no? I think it's really very, very important, number one, to keep your communication lines open, no? Bilang mag-asawa, isa sa pinaka- importanteng i-maintain ninyo. No matter how far you are from each other, it's your communication. Now, communication is important, but it's not just communication. How you communicate is also important. Maraming OFWs nag-uusap araw-araw. Or Monday, every ganitong oras mag-uusap tayo. But that's not what I mean. What I mean is you communicate 
your emotions, yourselves, your fears. You share your, your dreams and aspirations with one another. The kind of communication that I'm talking about is that open and honest communication. And whenever you feel like, what do I mean by open and honest communication? If you are in a really secure relationship, you should be able to tell your spouse. Medyo nahihirapan ako kasi meron akong kasama sa trabaho na ganito eh. No? And the response of the spouse should be, ay nako, ganyan, magsiselos na. Dapat hindi, no? Yun yung sinasabi mo na you support each other's weaknesses. At the moment, at the point of weakness ng asawa mo, you should be there to support your spouse. No? Na mas, mas lalo kang magiging caring sa kanya. What can I do to make you feel more secure? What can I do to, alam mo, alam mo yun, Find a way, find a way to to make your connection stronger. So I believe, you no, know, in in any relationship that's separated by distance, keep your communication line open. Be honest about what you feel with one another. Don't be judgmental. Pag nakita mo nagslip yung partner mo, alakam mo siya sa kamay buhatin mo. Huwag mo siya itulak pa palayo, lalo siyang madapa o malugok no. And I think that's that's something that we we do out of love, that we support one another, give and take, and yun lang. Uh, I believe there are things that uh, will be beyond our control, but for as long as we're able to communicate our feelings constantly, and the other person is there to support us, to understand us and not judge us, then I think we will be fine. Dahil marami naman tayong kilalang OFWs na matagal na magkalayo, but they're still strong in their relationship because they believe in the power of communication. Yan. Thank you po, Sir Joe. Salamat. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Miss Eloy. Thank Eloise. you sa mga taga-leads sa UK. And thank you, Sir Joe. Grabe, no? Thank you, Jen. Napakaganda, Sir, no? Open and honest communication. Napapanahon po yes. talaga ito, no? At kailangan-kailangan talaga ito ng mga OFWs, no? Para mm-hmm. talaga mapag-ibay natin at mapahaba talaga forever ang ating relationship with yes. us. Opo. Eh, ang question naman natin dito sa ating mga kasamahan. Ako, ano po ba ang best learning nyo tonight with Sir Joe? I-chat nyo naman. Ako, kailangan malaman natin kung may takeaway po ba tayo for tonight with Sir Joe. Oo, Nako. sana naman. No? May natutunan tayo kahit papano. Yes, na- Sobrang dami, napapanahon po talaga yan, Sir Joe. Napakalaking pasasalamat po talaga namin, no? So, syempre, gusto natin ng mas maraming learning. Tama ba? Who wants to keep learning with Sir Joe? I-chat nyo na po. Sino po yung gustong mas marami pang matutunan kay Sir Joe? Nako, dahil dyan, alam nyo na ano po ang dapat natin gawin. Alam kong gusto nyo rin pong ma-access ang more exclusive content from the best inspirational mentors and experts. Tama po ba? Siyempre, para tuloy-tuloy po ang learning. Weekly learning, no? From Sir Chinkita ng Preach Rebo sa, sa Preach Rebo FB page po, no? Uh, also, from FJK kay Sir Joe Damango sa ating Preach Mentors. Please like and share and follow nyo po ang ating Preach Revolution FB page. Huwag nyo kakalimutan and get a free copy po ng ating libro, The OFW Preach Handbook. Ayan, libre lang po yes. yan. Pasin nyo. Ayan, thank you so much. So, so, para sa mga new members po na nag-like and follow ng Preach Rebel FB page, ayan, you can get a copy po ng Preach Handbook natin. Ayan. 